I've had to walk out faith that won't quit since the Lord released me to preach it on Sunday. I've also had to war with distractions since last Wednesday. Always remember that what you preach, you will be tried at. But I thank God that I'm learning <laughs> how to depend on theology, meaning a sound biblical truth than feelings. Feelings will always trick you. Feelings will always forsake you. That's why the Bible admonishes us not to walk by flesh. Not to walk in the flesh and by the flesh. Because your feelings will deceive you. Your feelings, my God, will make you think that God don't love you. That God has forgot about you. When you try to serve God from your feelings, <laughs> I promise you, you will constantly feel the spirit of defeat, discouragement, frustration, anger, anxiety, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, feelings. That's what I love about Job. Job's theology got him through the tests and the trials. What he knew about God sustained him. That's why in the midst of the suffering that Job went through, you notice he never, ever cursed God. But if he'd have been trying to understand what he was going through by way of the flesh mahogany, he would have cursed God. That's why when his wife approached him and said, why don't you curse God and die? And he said, oh foolish woman, should we only serve God when it's good and not when it's bad? See, he rose above his feelings. When you're serving God, you got to rise above your feelings. You can't serve God by your feelings and your five senses. Because your five senses would discourage you. I know I'm talking to the people of God in the house of the Lord because many of us walk by way of the flesh and not of the spirit. So I had to remind myself, faith, it won't quit. I said right in my study, I had to tell myself that probably a hundred times. Don't let the distractions and the weight distract you. So I drew my strength from Job. I ain't going through that level of persecution and suffering, so therefore if he can stand, so can I. But he stood on what he knew about God. He knew, he stood on his, his, his the God's ways. Not on his feelings. I know that just helped somebody. Did it not? Many of us back up and quit because our feelings lead us and not the spirit. Yep, I'm just a transparent, real pastor. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 says, As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way, as I told y'all, God was headed somewhere. Where are you headed tonight? As they continued on their way, they came to a certain village. Uh huh. Where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted. By the big dinner, she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair? Uh -huh, feelings, y'all. To you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work. Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, <laughs> you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away from her. Lord, I thank you mm, for the privilege and the honor to stand before these wonderful, wonderful sheep, touch their root system, strengthen them, help us to rise mm, and take you at your word in spite of what we may see, in spite of what we may hear, in spite of what our flesh may be feeling. You are God and you're God all by yourself. 
and you change not. Mm. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for strength today. I thank you that the people, as the woman of God has wonderfully sung, Father God, will reach towards heaven and pull down everything that they may need tonight. We have showed up, and when we show up, Father God, the kingdom has showed up. And so, Father God, in the kingdom there is everything that a saint will need. And so, Father God, I pray that each man, woman, and child, Father God, find the key tonight to unlock that treasure that's in heaven so that they can receive what they need from you tonight. That they may go away from this place strengthened and ready to do battle in God's kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For those that may not have been here last week, you can go online and to Going Hard for Christ well page or even on YouTube and type in Going Hard for Christ Church and you can uh, listen to Death by Destruction Part 1. This would be Part 2. I mean Death by Distraction. This would be Part 2 just to kind of catch up, uh, my God, and stay in the river with us. But I want you to know that this is a bad boy right here. And I don't know how long, <laughs> uh, however God and however long God want me to stay. That's why I'm going to stay because distraction is a bad boy. The enemy uses many weapons, church. Y'all listen to me. Please buckle up and listen to your pastor. The devil will use many distractions, many things, many situations to try to distract you and shift your focus. Focus means a lot. As we learned in discipleship, one, whatever you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. The enemy will allow things to come into our lives to try to get us to focus on that which in turn takes the focus off of the essential thing, which is him. Are y'all with me so far? Oh, y'all need to talk to me, church. My God, anytime, my God, our focus begins to shift towards temporal things, <laughs> shift from the eternal to temporal, we're in trouble. I said anytime our focus, my God, even our affection and even our love going on for Christ's church begin to shift towards temporal things and not eternal things, we are in trouble. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Because what you focus on, that's what you go after. We as a people, we are worshipers, and we love to worship. And one thing, like I've taught you, you and I will worship something. So what are you really worshiping tonight? What really has your focus? What really has your attention tonight? Mm -hmm. what, is it anything that the enemy has crept in and used to distract you tonight? It could be frustration. It could be money. It could be drugs. It could be pride. It could be arrogance. You could be weary. It could be a whole lot of stuff that the enemy would try to use to distract you, to shift or divert, my God, or even detour your focus up off of God. Because truthfully, church, the only thing that's going to last, the only thing that truly matters is what we do for the Lord. Are y'all with me so far? Mm. And so as I read just a little bit of the in introduction from last Wednesday, distractions, my God, does not produce a happy, well-balanced, or productive life. A person that's distracted is really frustrated. Uh, they're searching. They're uneasy. They're divided. They're double-minded. Uh, that means you're double-souled. <laughs> You got two souls going on right now. Oh, my God, you got one that's turned towards the Lord. Sister Jackie, we got one that's turned towards the world. Come on, we wrestling. Mm. Oh, my God, when we're distracted, my God, we out of order. We out of balance, my God. Oh, my God, but God comes to put us back in balance tonight. And it's okay because when you're dealing with life, you tend to get distracted. You tend to get out of balance. I, it didn't happen to me many, even as a pastor. Oh, my God, come on, somebody. Mm. Mm-hmm. Distractions keep our most important relationship, as I taught you last week, shallow. I don't know about you, but the most important relationship is Matthew through, I mean Genesis through Revelation. My relationship with Christ. That is the most important relationship in the world. I know some of you don't believe it, but that's okay. I believe it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But you cannot, my God, have an intimate relationship with an intimate holy God, my God, if you are distracted. 
when you go into reading your word or when you go into prayer, my God, we have so much. We, I didn't say you, we have so much, my God, going on in our minds that it may take you 10 to 15 minutes just to settle your flesh down in your mind so you can begin to tap into the spirit. That's why I tell y'all, don't be so quick, my God, to come into the present and get out the present. Many people come down, my God, even doing altar call, and they'll come down, Pastor Champ, and they may be here, my God, one minute, two minutes. You ain't came in the presence of the Lord. You came down to clear your mind. Who am I, God? And when you go into devotion, or when you didn't have a rough day, when you've been dis- when you've been worn, my God, it may take you, like I said, 10, 15, 20 minutes, my God, just to settle your flesh down. That's why when you go into the presence of the Lord, just be quiet. Don't talk this later. You know what I'm saying? Get some music and just, and just later let the music minister to your soul. But you ain't got to go into the presence of the Lord talking. My God, all you're doing is talking about flesh. Flesh don't move God, faith move God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yeah, my God. What am I trying to teach y'all? We got to learn. I've been teaching y'all this for six years. We have to learn how to get comfortable in God's presence. You have to learn how to lay out in God's presence. And then we got to learn how to be quiet in God's presence. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. And so, therefore, we got to be able to learn how to come into the presence of the Lord and allow God to remove those distractions even though we have set in a service my god an anointed service with with the word and the presence and all that god does in the midst of the people of god and when we come down to the altar don't you know that you can still be distracted especially if you're walking down here and you wonder about who looking at you down while you down here you are already distracted if you get up out your seat and you looking back trying to see who looking at you, you you see you are already distracted or if you down here and you're saying you want you warn, you wonder, man, should I get down? Should I bow down? Should I, what should I do? What they gonna think? If I get, you know, see, you got all this. I'm trying to teach you, baby. We got all this stuff going on in the mind. You got to understand the death by distraction, man. Distraction is killing the people of God all over the country. Yeah, this good Bible study here tonight. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Because if we distract it, I promise you, we won't be able to say we got faith that won't quit. Distractions comes to kill your faith. I said distractions come to kill your faith. Because faith sustains you. Faith pushes you. Faith will cause you to rise up above all trials, tribulations, and hardships, my God. But when your faith is diminishing, you are in trouble. When you're no longer standing in faith, reading in faith, praying in faith, believing in faith, I promise you, you're just going through religious motions and you are in trouble. Uh, Because you think the world is bad now. Keep on living. Keep on living. That's why it's called faith, faith that won't quit. You and I got to build ourselves up and guard against distraction. Can I lay this foundation as I move to point number three, Mahogany, as you get ready? Can I tell you that you and I got to do a real self-examination? Because some of the stuff that we are blaming Satan for, it ain't Satan. It's people, places, things that we choose to continue to allow to be in our life. Everything that we're going through, everything that we may be battling and feeling, even right now. Uh, if, you really, if you really trace the root, thank you, Holy Ghost. If you really trace the root of where it first started at, it started in the thought. And it's something that you want. Because usually when we sin, it's called we're trying to please the flesh. Usually when we get out of the will of God, it's because we're trying to do our will. Usually, my God, when we begin to get distracted, it's called we're trying to make something happen quicker than what we want it to happen. I mean, than what God wanted to happen. See, I'm trying to teach the body. I told God today, I said, God, I need to deal with the root system. Because the stronger the roots, the stronger the tree. The stronger the roots, the stronger the tree. The roots grow underground. You don't see the roots. You don't see the roots. Fruit, fruit that produces my God, if it's strong fruit, good fruit, that's called the root system is good. If it's fruit that don't last, if it's fruit that you bite and you got to spit it out because it's, it's rotten, uh, that's called the root system is rotten. The fruit is an extension of the vine. How healthy is your vine? Jesus said, I'm the source, I'm the vine, and you are the branches. Stay connected to me, my God, and you'll produce. That's Bible. But if we get distracted. Mm. So point number three. Let's look at this. Distraction enslaves an insecure heart. Martha's busyness appeared to be driven by a need. A need, my God, she probably didn't even recognize about herself. 
according to verse 41, Jesus called her worried and upset about many things. The word worry, my God, is similar to distraction. It means to be torn into pieces. Worried about many things. Torn into pieces. Should I? Is he it? Is she it? Am I supposed to take this job? Am I supposed to? Just torn. Such a war. Torn in many directions. We all over the place. As I've been teaching y'all, my God, <clears throat> you can't manage chaos. You have to simplify your life. We got too many urns in the fire. We have been able to get by, and we call it, as I taught y'all, multitasking. But as I told y'all, what can you point to that, that, that you have completed? What have you started and now it's completed, and now you can move on to the next thing? And then when you finish that, then you can move on to the next thing. We are torn. We are distracted. We are worried. I'm going somewhere about many things. And we have to constantly wage war with the flesh. I want you to know, my God, tonight, going off of Christ Church and even those that's online watching, my God, you are in with the Bible because a real war between the flesh, the world, and, and the devil. And whichever one, my God, you submit to, that is your master. Hmm. Weary. Many of us weary. We worry about a lot of things. Yes, God knows the kids need to eat. Yes, God knows you need pampers. Yes, God knows you need a job. Yes, God knows, my God, the bills is about to get cut off. But you got to begin to do a self-examination. Why is it that my bills about to get cut off? What am I spending my money on? What, what, what is lording over my life? Why is it that I got a job, my God, but I'm constantly always broke? Why is it that my bills is always behind? What is it? What is the root problem? See what I say? See, we got to look at ourselves and make sure that we're not the one that's causing the distractions. See, my God, if the enemy can blind you and I, I and you, my God, to the real problem, then we'll never correct the problem. Mm, mm, mm. This woman of God was worried about many things, the scripture says, my God. Upset. She was also worried. She was upset. Upset means to be tossed alone. Uh, no anchor. Mm. No anchor. Mm. Are you anchored tonight? I hate to say it, but if you look around, mm, are you anchored tonight? Are you upset about many things? What has you upset tonight? What has your affections upset tonight? What has your mind upset tonight? What is troubling your spirit tonight? Who is troubling your spirit? What is troubling your spirit? You and I have to constantly be examining ourselves because there is people tonight, just like your pastor was earlier, my God, a little worried, a little upset. I'm preaching to myself, Christian, my God. Ah, my God, I'll say amen, my God. I'll talk to myself tonight, but what has you upset tonight? What is worrying you? What is troubling you? See what I'm trying to say? Is it something that God has allowed to come because he's trying to strengthen your faith? And you shunning it, my God, so, the, oh, my God, it, is, 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 is it self-imposed? Is it self-inflicted? Oh, my God, is it something that God is trying to use like he did Job? Come on, somebody. So we got to begin to look at these type of things because, again, death by distraction. If the enemy can get you to, 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 to divert, right, if the enemy can get you to deflect responsibility, if the enemy can get you to look at everybody else but you, You're not gonna never rise. You're not gonna never rise. You're not gonna never come up. You're not gonna never come out of your stuff because you're looking at it as somebody else's problem when the problem is really you. Somebody give God a hand for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Martha was unhappy. Martha was unsettled. Martha was unanchored. She had an unhappy soul. She had an unanchored soul. And she was troubled and worried all in her mind. Is that anybody in the church tonight? I promise you I'm not trying to preach you happy. I just want to plant a few seeds. I want to expose anything that's going on that you may think, I mean, that you may not have recognized. But are you unanchored tonight? Are you ready to quit? Are you ready to walk out? Are you ready to walk away? Are you ready to throw the towel in? Are you ready to wave the towel in? Oh, yeah, some of us is tonight. Unsettled, troubled. 
torn between two opinions. Don't know if you should or if you shouldn't. Mm. Don't know if he or she love you or they don't love you. Don't know, my God, if you're going to have a job in the morning when you go to the office or not, my God. Don't know how you're going to pay your bill. Don't know how you're going to eat. Uh, just, we just troubled by so many things. But then if we understand the scriptures, when the word of God in Matthew 6, says, seek first the kingdom of God first. It's the essential. It's the main thing. Boy, I'll be teaching y'all, my God. If you seek first the kingdom, God promise you that I will supply all of these needs. So we got to begin to ask ourselves, why is it so much lack? Am I really seeking or am I just going through the religious motions? Uh, is it any trace of sin? Because sin closes up the heavens. Sin, I mean, sin, sin stops the flow. Come on, somebody. And so we got to constantly be looking at ourselves, my God, and understand that God told us it's a promise in Matthew 6, 33. If we seek first the kingdom, he will supply all of your needs. Your needs should be getting met. You shouldn't always be struggling. It shouldn't always be hard. You shouldn't always be upset. You shouldn't always be worried. Something is wrong, and I promise you ain't nothing wrong with God, ain't nothing wrong with the kingdom. It's, it's you and I. Because that ain't the book. He told me if I seek him first, Jackie, he's going to take care of me. And I'm a living example that he will do that. Oh, my God, just because all the needs are met don't mean that I don't go through no war. But I promise you, my God, worrying about a bill? Worrying about how you're going to turn your water on and off? My God, I pray I'm not trying to be insensitive. But ask yourself, why is I'm in these situations all the time? Every three months I need somebody to pay my water bill. Why? Christians, we must have a aroma where we always got our hands out. We always troubled. We always drifting because we're not anchored. It's always something. I'm going to encourage you. I'm coming, but I just want to expose some stuff and shake your conscience a little bit. My God, to get you to thinking, because see, we get to tend, we tend to look at everybody else. And see, some of you may think, because your bills is paid, and you may have a little bit of joy in the marriage, <laughs> that this don't apply to you. But I guarantee you, if you do a real self-examination, just keep on living. You're going to show them and say, Pastor, what was those scriptures you gave? What was the name of that? Where's YouTube at? <laughs> oh, it might be good right now. Just keep on living. <laughs> oh, you might get all your bills paid. You might get plenty of cheese stacked. Come on, my, keep on living, though. Uh-huh, because sometimes God and the enemy will let it get stacked up real high. Things will be going real good, and you'll just be carrying on, my God. And it seems like everything you pray for, God give it to you. And it seems like whatever you touch, my God, turns to gold, but keep on living. Because I promise you, my God, many people serve God because of what he can do. But when God begins to withhold, when the heavens begin to close up, when he don't reply no more like I taught you, when he don't answer no more like I taught you, then what you going to do? When your feelings get all over the place, my God, then what you going to do when he don't reply, when he turns his back? Yeah. The Bible said he'll never leave you, nor forsake you, my God. Even because he turned his back, Christian don't mean he left you. He want to see if he's going to stand. He want to see if he got faith that won't quit. He want to see if he's going to serve me anyhow. Is he... Some of y'all that's friends with me on Facebook, I shared an article as I read a little bit of it, and it spoke to me. I seen that you did comment on Brother Christian. My God, uh, one of the pastors saying that uh, uh, the church pretty much my verbiage, my, we in trouble because we want to be entertained. He said the church is not making disciples no more. We want to be entertained. We're using all the gimmicks and gimmicks and all the whatever it can, my God, that we adopt from the world to try to keep the people's attention. To, to, to try to, you know, come, but see, but, uh, but, uh, but, but, but when you teach the people about how important this is, I promise you, yes, I understand that we got to adapt to the culture. I understand that you can use some things, my God, but, but, but the strength of the church is not how many people in the church, but how many disciples is in the church. And so when we got to start pulling all the world stuff to try to keep the people of God that's supposed to be in love with God's attention, the church is in trouble. This is pastor and pastor Madeline. If we got to use all these images and gimmicks, Wesley, to try to keep y'all attention, we're in trouble. If you don't love this, 
but you'd rather see somebody up here doing flying in on a helicopter, my God, and dropping out the sky just to preach. If it takes all that entertainment and stuff, my God, to, to keep you, my God, uh, 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 excited about God, just knowing that you got an opportunity to stand before God and hear a job well done. Just, 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 just uh, that, uh, my God, to know that you didn't die in your mess, to know that God shifted, to know that God turned it around, my God, to know, my God, that life is much better than what it used to be. I don't look like what I've been through, my God. If you got to have all that stuff, my God, all that sensational stuff, all that stuff that ministers to the flesh, and then when your faith is tested, you're on anchor. Because your faith, my God, and your trust is not in God, it's in all the, the show. And so therefore, when the pastor run out of gimmicks, or when the church ain't got no more entertainment for you, then you'll be like, okay, it's time for me to go somewhere. I did not grow in the church. Then we found an excuse to leave. And, 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 and when I shared it, it's some substance to it. Y'all know just as well as I know all the stuff that's going on in the body, like we talked about last on Monday night. My God, we have to represent Christ. We present Christ to the world. Christianity has been so misrepresented by the very people that stand right up here where I'm at and preach the gospel and also the very people, my God, that sit in the body of Christ. My God, because out there, my God, we have no power and we have no influence. Death by distraction. The church is being a Lord to sleep. Are you asleep tonight? Bishop preached a message years ago, Minister Janisha, you remember. Uh, while you were sleeping, the title was, while you were sleeping, in the church, sleep. Not physical sleep, spiritually sleep. Enemy running all up and down your life. We jump in the shout, no victory. Kids being picked off, all kind of stuff, death by distraction. The enemy will come inside of a local body, a local church, and start distracting the people of God through complaining, through gossip, people that become ungrateful. Read the Bible. This is all Bible. I am not fussing. I'm teaching you. This is all Bible. And when you start seeing all that stuff, my God, it's just, that's division. We're getting weaker and weaker. We have no power, no influence. We contaminate our own people in the church. We become a stumbling block to our own people. It's terrible everywhere, including going off of Christ church. Oh, pastor, you supposed to make us feel better tonight. I preach the truth. A young seller on anchor. She was probably, my God, was the kind of person who needed to be needed. Is that you tonight? I got to be busy. I need to be needed. Come on, somebody. The kind of person who only feels significant when everyone is depending on them. I'm going somewhere. Oh, my God. I, I'm still in the spirit. You may not think I am, my God. But you never come in the presence of the Lord and don't get something. My God, and always get, don't you know correction is love? Yeah. Don't tell me you love me, but you never correct me. And I'm not doing it in anger. I'm just preaching the dust, dust says the Lord. Because, see, one thing that I've learned is that sometimes we can be going alone and things can be so good and we forget. We forget that we got a war going on and that the enemy is coming. And then we begin to sit in the house of the Lord and think that that don't apply to me. Then we start moving, my God, to self-righteousness. But we forget when we had hell in the marriage. When the kids like the drove was crazy, we forget all that type of stuff, my God, when things start going good. And so, that, oh, that don't apply to me. That, that's Dominique's problem. That's Pastor Naila's problem. Death by distractions. Everything that the Spirit of God is saying, even in relation to the church and the, and the message. I'm going back to the message and going back in context, content. But at the end of the day, you still got to take this time on a Wednesday night to make sure that you keep this people's spirit awoke. Because we can go through the motions of coming to church, coming to Bible study, going to foundation, going to class, and all that, and not be pushing forward in the kingdom. Everything is all a lot of fleshly activity. Y'all don't agree with that, though, do y'all? Come on, let's give God a hand. Let's give God a hand. <laughs> Amen, Janice. I see you with me. You with me. Uh, this is for the mature. But here is the question. 
Ask yourself, do you have to be busy to feel significant? Do you always have to be doing something to feel like you're important or that you're valued? Some people do. Mm. Why should one need to feel needed by others to feel significant? Some of you have people in your life that need to feel significant. Always needing people to need them. And here's the cold thing about it. When people deal with that type of spirit, this is still with more. I'm going somewhere. Just follow me. Just follow me. If you, 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 you need to feel significant, and then when people don't make you feel significant, you start complaining. You start talking about they don't love me. Nobody don't care about me. Nobody didn't honor me. Nobody didn't recognize me. This is a cold-blooded thing. My God. That's a root system problem. You feel so strong, so vibrant. You're like a flower on a summer day. Oh, my God, long as people are, uh, are needing you, using you, or whatever. But when people take back up off you, you feel so depressed. I know the Spirit of God is talking to the body of Christ. Some people do what they do because they need to feel significant. But when, my God, they're no longer needed, then they get down. That's a dangerous place to be in. But that wasn't the moral of the story. Ah, oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Some of us are looking for something in service that we should be finding in Jesus. We're a shovel sheep dung. We're a porter. We're a Greek. We work with game time and all that. But that don't mean we're in Jesus. See, don't you know that working in the house of the Lord, don't nobody take this out of context, can distract you from you getting your root system healthy, from you getting your self-esteem and your self-image and your self-confidence built up, my God, for you to start feeling good about who you are as a man or a woman of God. You can be so busy doing so many things and not be growing. A whole lot of activity, but not growing, not developing. Mm, let me give you this right quick. Write these down. You're going to like this. Let's look at some lessons that we can learn from Martha right quick. And then I'm going to deal with Mary and I'm going to get out the way. We got good time. Write down number one, anxiety. Write down some lessons. A lot of anxiety. When Jesus visited her home, Martha was poured in many directions. She was overwhelmed by preparation. Because in the Jewish culture, let me go seminary on y'all now, because in the Jewish culture, my God, my God, hospitality was very important. Being When people come into your house, it's your job, my God, as a woman to serve them. So she immediately went to doing what she have always known to be done, that serve. Come on, somebody, in the Jewish culture. But her service brought a lot of anxiety because somebody that was supposed to be helping her wasn't helping her. Uh-oh. So even though this is what we're supposed to be doing, because this is the Jewish culture, my God. Oh, my God. Jackie not beside me, so now I'm angry. I know I'm supposed to be doing this, my God, but, but, but my helpmate ain't there, so I'm angry. So you and I got to begin to look at ourselves at this day and time, my God, and ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? My God, because if you're angry because ain't nobody there with you, my God, why are you doing what you're doing? Are you needing to be needed? Are you needing to be seen? Come on, somebody. Do you feel significant when you're doing something? She got upset because her partner, my God, was not there with her. And so when, when, when you know you're doing it for the wrong reasons, pastoral woman of God, when you quit, my God, because the person that you thought was with you sat down on you and you stopped. If she sat down or he sat down, then I'm going to sit down. Flesh, feelings, angry. Because you're not where you're supposed to be at. So now the enemy has used my brother, my sister, to distract me. And now that I'm angry, now that I'm frustrated with him, I'm just going to use your son. Now, now there's division between me and you when it was agreement. How can two walk together such a big agreement? Because you didn't sit down on me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So now I'm upset with you, so I don't want to talk to you no more in the church. See how the enemy is methodical. The enemy is methodical, baby. He destroys from within. <sighs> See, y'all... This ain't about clubs, this ain't about smoking weed, this is a whole other level of preaching right here, baby. And so now, 
I'm angry. I'm dealing with anxiety. Every time I see them, I want to get over to the other side, get away from them because I'm angry at them. But I'm still down here. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Fuller. Hey, Janine. Hey, Marilyn. But I, every time I see Dominique, I'm oh, it made me sick. Death by distraction. So what am I trying to say? And so I, there, there's been a breach in the relationship. There has been a breach in the relationship. There's no more unity between me and the man of God. Because my expectation mm, was not met. My, my perception, my God, was, was violated. Us, mm, and so therefore, I got a problem. And so now I'm in the church, my God, and I'm functioning, but there was in a breach between me and my brother. And the second greatest commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself, my God. But because you dropped out or however you want to put it, I got a problem with you. But I'm still functioning. I'm still going through the motions. But I got bitter roots in me. Bitter roots rob you. Bitter roots close the heavens. Bitter roots stifle your prayers. Bitter roots, my God, will call God to hold up, my God, the, the, the dew from heaven in your life. Oh, my God, this is cleansing time. And so many of us is, is, is bitter towards people in the church, outside the church, loved ones, mamas, all type of stuff. My God, we got bitter root. When we see them, I think about it, we get angry to the point of anxiety. That's when you know you're overtaken. When you look at him or you look at her or even when you think about it, it, it almost makes you sick. That's a bad place to be in, Christians. Let's look at another thing. I don't want to get stuck. Let's look at another thing. Uh, uh, she was irritable. Uh. Yeah. Watch this. That's why I thank God for being able to do, come back and preach a little bit more because you get to study some more. Martha was upset. Martha was upset. Especially because she wanted help from her sister. Some of us right now are upset because you told me you was going to do this with me and you didn't do it. And now I am upset with you. Mama, you said you was going to do this, and you ain't did it. Daddy, you said you was going to do this, and you didn't do it. Sister, you said it, but you didn't do it. I am upset with you. So she went and ran to the Lord. <laughs> she went and told God on her. I commend you, go tell God. Because I want to tell you why she was upset. Let me teach you. Hospitality, I studied this out. Hospitality was, was valued real highly in the Jewish custom, culture, I mean. And Martha was fulfilling the expected role of a woman. She was doing what she was supposed to do. When a guest come into the crib, you went straight to the kitchen and get dinner prepared and get a meal prepared and so forth. She was actually doing what she was brought up to do. See, y'all didn't know that. I didn't either until I studied more. Hospitality, they serve people. Usually women didn't get up and, and, and women didn't get up before the people of God and stuff like they do today. You know what I'm trying to say? They had their roles. Oh my God, they function in their spot. They function in their position. See what I'm trying to say? When a man of God, a woman of God come to your house, it wasn't a man went in the kitchen shut up for burning dinner. It was a woman. Oh my God, you tell a woman to do that today, she's like, man, you done lost your mind. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, but I'm trying to break, keep the scripture in context to make you understand why the woman of God was upset. Because, she, because, of, because of culture, she, both of them were supposed to be off in there preparing this meal for the king. And one chose not to, and the other one, my God, was operating what she know to do. But it vexed her. Are y'all with me so far? She was frustrated with Mary. Mm-hmm. Watch this down. She was to the point of even despair. Right down the word despair. So anxiety went all the way down to despair. If you don't deal with it, it's going to crush you. If you don't deal with your anger, it's going to crush you. If you're going to deal with that irritability that she was, it's going to crush you. Despair. She had preoccupation with anxiety over preparation. That's what she was despair. I ain't got no help. I need Jackie to help me. Jackie, I'm sorry. I'm just calling your name, daughter. I'm sorry. But, but I need you to help me. I need you to help me. And because you're not helping me, I'm, I'm flipping out. I'm flipping out. That's what happened. This is the story. I'm just breaking it to you, my God, in, in secular form, my God. But see, I, I need you. You ain't there. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You're supposed to be with me. Why are you over there? Why are you sitting with him? You're supposed to be in the kitchen with me. Why you ain't got your earth on? My God, I need you to help me make this pile. I need you to help me make this cornbread. She was to the point of despair, like some of us is right now. 
Some of us right now is at the point of despair. At any moment, somebody could push you off the cliff. Push you out of faith. Push you out of faith. Push you out of the very church, my God, that helped build your life. The very thing you was once excited about on fire, love, and you're gone. False expectations is another distraction. People will make mistakes. People will tap out. People will let you down. That's why you put your faith in God and thank God when people bless you and love them when they make mistakes. And I ain't always been able to say that as a pastor. You got to constantly be growing and developing as a man or woman of God. Mm. She was preoccupied, you know what I'm saying? She was angry, mm, anxious over preparation, and it can easily lead to despair because things might not get finished. I need your help. I need your help. Mm, mm, mm. Let's look at some lessons for Mary. Now write this down. So Martha dealt with anxiety. She was irritable. And she went to the point of despair. But let's look at Mary, though. Let's look at Mary. Y'all ready? Number one, write down posture. Posture. Mary postured herself. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. She said, I ain't got time to put on an apron today. I ain't got time to stir no flour. I ain't got time to bake no cakes. I, I need something from somebody that's crossed over and came into this house. See, sooner or later, as I teach y'all, you got to come off the battlefield. And you got to get to God. You got to get to God. You got to get to the, to the one that can fix you, the one that can help you. The only one, my God, that truly loves you, ain't going to hurt you, and he means well for you. And so, my God, Mary said, so I'm, I'm shifting. Mm. Mary said, I, I, I'm not going to do the, the traditional thing. See, some of us can't really get free because we're too traditional. We come in and sit pretty much in the same vicinity. We go through the same amount of worship. We don't never get too, too, adequate, too undignified. We might give the same three dollars. We might pray the same. I'm not putting nobody. That was being honest. We might pray the same three minute prayer. We might read one chapter, but don't get no revelation out of it. But we cleared our mind. We can't get no revelation because we're so distracted when we go to read to God. To read the word of God. So when I get ready to read, I would say, God, settle my mind down. See, it's always important. Let me train you now because I want you to feel like I'm, I'm crushing you. I want you. When you come into the presence of God, when you open up the Bible, you come in and sit with the king. You got to understand that. So you got to understand, my God, that you don't come before a king any kind of way. When you grab your Bible, you come in before the king. This is God in word form. So you say, God, prepare me to be in your presence. Prepare me to approach your word. Prepare me to sit with you. You can't just pick up your Bible after you and cuss everybody out and tell me, I'm going to read my Bible and clear my mind. You ain't ready. And so you ain't got, so, so, so you open up your Bible, you don't get no revelation. You don't get no new wine from the king. Because you approached him out of order. You need to be saying, God, I pray for wisdom. I pray for knowledge. I pray for understanding. Clean my soul up. Forgive me, Father God. Don't let me mishandle your word. Oh, my God, give me clean hands as I open up the word of God. You got to go through a formality. Mm. The Bible says when, 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 when the king sent for, for, sent, sent, for, sent for Joseph, the Bible said Joseph cleaned up himself and changed. He shaved and changed clothes. Joseph was in prison, my God. He understand. I can't just go for the king, my God. I ain't shaved. I ain't took no bath. I got all these nasty prison clothes. He shaved and he cleaned himself up, and then he went before the king. Can't just come before God any kind of way. What am I trying to say? Many of us are approaching God any kind of way. The church has lost its reverence for God. We just treat God any kind of way, and we wonder why. It's closed. Everything seems like a, uh, it's always a strain. Uh, ain't no aroma. Uh, ain't no freshness. Uh, you got to know how to approach a king. That's when the Bible says you never come before a king empty-handed. It's dishonorable. That's Bible. When you got money in your hand and you come before a king and don't give God nothing. If you read your Bible, my God, when you hear your pastor make that statement, you say, you know what? Everywhere I look in the Bible, every time they went before a physical king, they had an offering. It wasn't money. It was a sheep, a bullock, a goat. They never came before a king. Even Queen Sheba, she blessed Solomon. And before Solomon let her leave, Solomon blessed her back. You never approach God promise. We're trying to help y'all get that principle. Many of us come before God any kind of way. We don't never give God what belongs to him. And we wonder why... 
You know why we do that? Because we're distracted and saying, I wonder what they're doing with the money. I wonder what kind of car he's driving. I wonder why he always got on new tennis shoes. See, see what I'm saying? Death by distraction. And so therefore, we disqualify ourselves. You think you hurt me? You're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself. I'm trying to teach the church distraction. But she, she was sitting. Watch this. She was sitting. Let me move. Let me move. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus when he visited her home. She submitted to his authority and sought, watch this, y'all, and sought to listen and learn from him. According to Acts 22, where Paul sat with Gamaliel, however you pronounce his name, my God, I'm so be pronounced. But he said in Acts 22, 3, let's, let's turn, turn with me to Acts 22, 3. Let's look at that. Let's look at right there, right there. Acts 22, 23. 22, I mean, 22, 3. Mm -hmm. It talks about how Paul, Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in the city of Sicilia, and I was brought up and educated here in Jerusalem under Gamaliel as a student. See, what a disciple is, they are students. So what she did, y'all need to catch this, and I'm going to finish. She came and sat, Acts 22, 3. She came and sat. She went against Jewish culture, Jewish custom. I ain't got time to be worried about no food. Here come the king that's crossed and came into my presence. Oh, my God, this man is sitting in my house, the one that got the keys to unlock everything, the one that can change my life, the one that can heal my body, the one that can heal my mind, my God. And you worried about some food? My God, I'm going to sit right here in the presence of the king. And she sat as a student. Now watch this. Now watch this. You're going to like this. She sat. As a student, because this is what I found out as I was telling Mahogany today, my God, because rabbis did not have female disciples. When you look throughout the scriptures, you don't see no female that was a disciple. That's why you better thank God that he tore the tent, that rent the tent. Thank God that grace came out of heaven. Because there was things that we get to do today, my God, as ladies... Oh, we. As ladies, <laughs> we get to do today that you was not allowed to do in the Old Testament. Also in Jewish custom. Because, so therefore, she broke all custom, man of God. She went and sat in the presence at the feet, submitting when you sit at the feet. That's why the Bible says Paul studied. As a, I mean, he sat as a student. He, when you sit with somebody, you're you, you showing submission to them. Especially when you say that they feet. That's submission. Here was a woman that was not supposed to be doing that. That's another reason why the woman of God was so upset. See what I'm trying to say? Because you're doing something that, I ain't, that, that we ain't supposed to be doing. You need to be staying with tradition. I'm going somewhere. You ain't supposed to be doing that. You post, you know, you know, you'll get healed the next day. Shut up. Don't be shouting and hollering. Jesus have mercy. Be quiet. You know what I'm saying? See, you was just stuck on some of us can't get free because we stuck in tradition. And we may say, we, I'm, not, I'm not traditional. I'm not religious. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, if it ain't religion, watch this and I'm moving. It's covered up by self righteousness. Some people you never, ever, ever see come to the altar. That's a dangerous place to be in. Because the altar, let me teach, represents purification. The altar represents sacrifice. So when you get up at your seat and you come down here, you're coming to kill, you're coming to sacrifice, whatever it is that you need. Be it anger, frustration, anxiety, fr whatever. You come in, you trade in that. And you receive what God has for you. If you need peace, you trade in the anger and frustration and receive this peace. But I am terrified, and I've been hearing me say this, of people. I don't care how long you've been in ministry. I don't care what you done done. When you don't never come lay out before God, I never see you make your way down to the altar, you are dangerous. Because you have operated in a self-righteous spirit. I know the church don't like tonight, but it's Bible. You won't get up at your seat because you feel like your life is so good. And I know the type of word woman of God has been preaching in this pulpit for me and everybody else. And just the not even with the pre just the presence of the Lord, Minister Janice. And they never, ever get out their seat and come down here and lay out in dangerous. Either they say that don't apply to me. And when you say something don't apply to you, that's self-righteousness. 
because all of us, include mine, even as a pastor. That's why you see me after I get through preaching, son, lay down. Because, you know, say, in a multitude of words, sin is soon to follow. When you're up here preaching and teaching, you can say stuff my God is sin. I lay down and say, God, please forgive me for any and everything that I may have said to the people of God that was ungodly. That's reverence, that's humility, that's submission, and that's understanding you, you don't play with a king, man. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about God. See, the church has lost that level of reverence. And a person like that will be criticized. It don't take all that. But look at their root system. Yeah. Somebody give God a hand. I'm about to. Somebody give God a hand. Amen. 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 John the Baptist. Prepare the way. You got to be willing to be uncomfortable. You got to be willing to be ostracized. You got to be willing to be under, misunderstood when you're handling this mantle, man of God. I don't look to be popular. Call it arrogance if you want to. I call it loving God and want to see your soul saved and hear you and prepare you to stand before God and hear a job well done, my good and faithful servant. Somebody give God a hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she postured herself. She was criticized for posturing herself. But let's look at this right down priority. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mary made it a priority to sit at Jesus' feet. Priorities are the things we say yes to at the expense of other things that we say no to. Let me say that again. Priorities, my God, are the things we say yes to at the expense of other things that we say no to. People mistakenly think that their priorities are the things, my God, that they think are most important. This cut me. Our priorities are actually things that we do. We think it's the most important, but it's just a thing we do. This is priority, so I got to do this. I know I got to get up and go to work, so that's a priority. I know I got to comb my daughter's hair, that's a priority. I know I got to get up and dress my son for school, that's a priority. I know I got to stop and put gas in my car, that's a priority. I know I got to check Facebook, that's a priority. I know I got to post a picture on Instagram, that's a priority. <laughs> I know I got to make that phone call, that's a priority. If you notice everything I said, I know Janice didn't call me. I never said nothing about God. Everything flesh. Death by distractions. When God wake you and I up in the morning, our minds start running. And whatever we deem as important, whatever we deem as priority, whatever we deem as top notch, that's what we focus on. Whatever you focus on the longest, you become the strongest. So if I'm a busy person like many of you are, amen, don't feel bad, my God, because you got things going on in your life that's positive, amen. But as you know, if you got a busy day and you're going to be moving like this, then you got to make sure that you get some rest in the evening time so you can get up a little early so you can spend time with the king. You and I got to learn how to sit with the king. You got to learn how to posture yourself with the king. Many of you got a lot of productive things going on. You're being very productive in life. You're being very fruitful in life, my God. Oh, my God, you're doing a lot of external stuff, and it's productive, and it's fruitful, and it's good. Somebody just shouted 545 because she know, and I know who I'm talking about, she know that she got a very productive, busy day. And so if I don't get up early, my God, it's going to be hard for me to get it in. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. So you got to get up and be obedient. So therefore, God told you to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, but you keep hitting that. God is trying to train you. As I taught my men out of Timothy, God says train yourself to be godly. You got to train yourself. I said, the word of God says to Timothy, train yourself, Sharon, to be godly. You have to train yourself. You read God's word and you apply God's word and you train yourself to be godly. You can never become godly if you never read the word because the word of God trains you how to be godly. So if you are up doing all this productive stuff, you up, my God, having a very fruitful, busy day, my God, that's good. Oh, my God, but are you spending time with the king? Are you posturing yourself with the king? Are you sitting with the king? Because when you sit with the king, he start making us look at our root system. I'm about to. And point number four. Let's go back to point number four, Mo. Distraction entices an empty heart. I'm closing with that right there. Distractions. 
entices an empty heart. Ooh, Lord, we got to fill our heart. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me balance something out as I finish this point. Just because you do not get up and come down to the altar, that don't mean you in sin. That don't mean you self-righteous. Only God and you know the condition of your soul. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I felt that way. But any time in the course of 365 days, however many times we are in church on a Sunday and Wednesday, uh, women's or men's discipleship, and you never in a whole year ever feel an unction to come down here, please teach me what you're doing so I can begin to submit to you and make you the pastor of this church because that means you ain't got nothing going on. Well, you need to come down here and get closer to Jesus? Oh, you mean tell me that in 365 days, you don't see no reason to sit and become a student with Jesus? In 365 days, uh, nothing? Oh, please, let me submit to you. Let me submit to you. Let me install you and set you, man, a woman of God. As a senior pastor going off for Christ Church, in 365 days, how many times we come to church, my God, and you have to never, ever come down and lift your hands or prostrate yourself or say, Lord, forgive me. Please let me follow you. Thank you, Lord. This is what you call fathering. This is what you call fathering. And my last one. Because Jesus was not in the right place. I mean, because, because Jesus was not in the right place in Martha's heart. Her soul craved the significance that came from serving. When our soul is out of fellowship with Jesus, we are always craving more. Whew. When our soul is out of fellowship with Jesus, we need more. More worldly music. More alcohol. More sex. More social media. More partying, more and 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 more because we are unfulfilled. We are not satisfied. We are trying to feel a place in our soul that only God can feel. I'm speaking from experience. When your soul is empty, you crave, we crave all type of stuff that we try to put in God's place. And it never brings fulfillment. And that's why we searching. That's why we could come to church. People could come to church. Let me clean it up. People could come to church. My God, and have an outstanding time in God's presence. And then leave church and go look for more. Can have a real encounter with God. An Acts 9, daughter. Head on collision with God. And walk up at the church house and still need more. Unfulfilled. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. When our soul is out of fellowship, if I said it, my God, uh, uh, with Jesus, we are always craving more. Scientists say the reason many of us are so attached to our phones <laughs> is that when we look at social media, a chemical called dopamine gets released. Dopamine is the same substance that causes us to get addicted to drugs, pornography, and other things. That's why the Bible speaks about, my God, everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial. And so, therefore, if you know yourself and you're spending time with the king and you're sitting in the presence and you're posturing yourself, you know, like I know, that I have, me and you both, have an addicted personality. So we can't be playing around with this stuff, my God, because all it took is one time for me to become a drug addict. One time of using, I became a drug addict. I like to kill myself many times over. You know if you got an addicted personality, then why do you keep flirting with it? Because you need that high. Oh, but when I tapped into Jesus, I got a high, and I still been high. And it's a good high. It don't, I don't spend up all my money. I don't sell all my clothes to stay high. My God, I don't go to abandoned houses. I don't sleep in abandoned cars because the high is pure. 
I don't need a whole lot of stuff, Minister Denise, my God, to make my soul happy. I ain't got to go get me no Mercedes Benz because I can go get one. I ain't got to have all this stuff, my God, because I'm fulfilled. Because I'm fulfilled in God. It's pure. It's unadulterated love. I love God. And that's all that I need. When your love is at a minimal, you need everything else to try to suffice that. But when you didn't taste it, the goodness of the Lord. Ha. Oh, my God. You don't have to have all that stuff. I drive my, 19, my, my 2016 Honda and floss like I got a... Uh, I said, I drive my 2016 Honda act like I got a Bentley sitting out there. But I bet you I'm fulfilled and I sleep good at night. Is your soul fulfilled? Are you out of fellowship? Who are you and what are you trying to impress? Why do you have to have all this stuff? Why do you have to go to all these places? Why do you have to do all the things that we do? I just taught you because our soul is out of fellowship. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotion. Usually when we are distracted, we get distracted, church, in our mind. So if my mind is distracted, guess what? My emotion is going to be attached to what my mind is. My emotions will solely be attached to what my mind is. So if my mind is distracted, guess what? My emotions is following my mind, and now my emotions is distracted. And now when my mind is distracted and my emotion is distracted, my will is unsubmitted. And so then I won't come posture myself and sit at the feet of the king because my will is over here and my mind is over there and my emotions is over there. I'm divided. So I think that if I come to church, my God, and go through the ritual, my God, I'm good. We are in a bad place. Guard that. If that's you tonight, guard that. God will send this type of word because he loves you. I'm willing to take a chance and preach this type of word because I love you. I'm always praying for a pulse. I don't want you to get to the point to where you're going through the formality. I don't ever want you to get to the point, like I teach my sons, them, my God, don't rest on your gifts. If you, are, you have a, a place in your heart that's void, everything you're trying to put there don't go there. God go there. You and I, when Paul said, I've learned to be content, that means he ain't got to have all the stuff and I'm good. If I got plenty, I'm good. If I got lack, I'm good. I've learned. It's an art of how to be content. Reason why we're not content, because we're trying to fill a void. If you just learn how to fall in love with Jesus, Jesus will fill the void. Jesus has enough in him to satisfy every desire that you got. Me and Champ did a whole lot of things. Dominique, you drunk a whole lot of good liquor. Oh, my God. Some of y'all have done a whole lot of good things, my God. Oh, my God. But I tell you, mm, ain't nothing like Jesus. I promise you, ain't nothing like Jesus. Mm. Oh, my God, and one of the things that you and I got to always guard against is being distracted. And the enemy will use some of those that's closest to you to distract you, my God. He'll lose your in-laws, your outlaws, your husband, your wives, your mamas, your daddies. He'll use all that. He'll use your brothers and sisters in the natural. He'll use your brothers and sisters in the spirit to distract you. Remember, your mind's over here, your emotions over there, and your will is over there. That's a soul that's unanchored. That's a soul that's not at rest. If I'm all over the place, I'm not at rest. That's why I'm, I'm, I, I deal with anxiety. That's why I toss and turn at night. That's why I don't get a full rest. Because I'm not at peace, church. Distracted. Don't you know you can read your Bible right before you go to bed to try to have some peace? And the Bible says as soon as the word of God is sown, the devil comes to slatch it. Why in the world am I thinking about this? I just read my Bible. And as soon as you read it, the enemy said, I'm finna come get it. See, this, I'm saying, this is, this is real, real stuff that we have to guard, church. We have to guard against this stuff. It is killing your root system. It is hindering us from developing. It will hinder you from going to the next level. It would rob you of everything. Distraction is a bad boy, but don't camouflage it. Don't let it hide behind religion and activity. Deal with yourself. Be honest. Like I said, I had to go through war. My faith, my God, who oh my God, wanted to quit. I still said, oh my God, I, I had to reach. I had to talk to some people. 
I had to get myself back under control. I had to get my emotions back in this place. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm preaching from experience, baby. I'm not. I, oh, my God. I live what I preach, baby. I go through what I preach. Come on, come on. That's why I be so real. Come on, come on. That's why I want to help you. Because I love you. And I want you to be healthy. And I want you to be happy. And I want you to grow. I want all of you to understand that you need to start taking time to sit with Jesus. And when you sit with Jesus, learn how to sit there and be quiet. And say, God, show me me. Show me me, God. Show me those areas where I'm distracted at doing a lot of good things and not the main thing. Show me what I need to stop doing. Show me where I'm falling short at, God. Let, let me quit all these old tongues. My God, and be quiet so I can hear you speak to me and say, change that, stop that, move away from him, move away from her, get from over there. You know what I'm trying to say? Get still, learn how to sit in the presence of, learn how to just come, my God, and be like an Indian and just sit in the presence of the Lord. Learn how to just lay down in the presence. You ain't got to say that just lay down. Some people got to keep a lot of noise because when they get quiet, it terrifies them. They're scared for the Spirit of God to really show them, my God, the condition of their soul. And so I got to keep a lot of stuff going on. I got to make sure the phone is real close in case I get a text message, my God. Oh, my God. I'm trying to focus, but I'm waiting on him to call, my God. I got too much going on, my God. I can't sit with the king. And so you feel like you're coming and all you're reading and all you're doing, you feel like it ain't getting you nowhere because everything that you're doing is being robbed. That's Bible. The enemy is taking it. If a seed does not fall into the ground and die, it battles alone. You got to make sure the seeds hit the dirt. You got to get comfortable growing in the dirt. A seed don't grow in the light, it grow in the dirt, in the mud. Can you grow in the mud? We uncomfortable. We want the light. We want the mountain. But as I taught y'all, God does his greatest work and his deepest work in the valley. Them hard places. Them unfamiliar places, woman of God. Those places that we don't know. And all we got is faith. We don't know I'm standing in faith. I'm standing in trust. I got to do what I know to do. And if what I know to do is to hold on to you, God. If I got to hold on to the altars, the horns of the altar, that's all I know. You got to do what you know, baby. Thank you, Lord. Here's another thing that will distract you. I know I went over, but I just want to help the people. Here's something. Unfollow. Listen to me, y'all. Unfollow people that you envy. Unfollow people that you envy. People that's on social media and on your Facebook and you know y'all got a problem, why are you keeping them on Facebook? So you can see what they're doing? Distraction. That's a distraction. That's a distraction. That's what you call, I taught y'all much ago, clip, clip, clip. Why are you following somebody and paying attention to somebody's Facebook, my God, or social media, my God, and you don't like them? Because you're being nosy. That's called distraction. I'm trying to help you, church. I'm almost about to cry. I'm trying to help you. Because we dying in the church house all over the country. Unfollow people that you know you don't get along with so you don't be following them and paying attention to what they're doing. You spend more time following them than you do following God. Mm. And my last thing, in order to overcome distractions, review your priorities. Review your priorities. Put the main thing back in the main place. The main thing is your relationship with God. Quit letting the pleasures and the curves of this world rob you of an opportunity to sit with the king. What part of your soul are you trying to feel with the world? Are you doing what you're doing 
because you need to feel needed. That's a void. Something has happened in your life. If you do what you do because you need to feel significant, if you need to be affirmed, if you need to be stroked all that all the time, something is wrong, man. If you can't carry on and you can't do what God has called you to do at the level God called you to do it, unless somebody's always acknowledge you, unless somebody's always pointing you out, if somebody's always calling your name, you feel less than, you don't feel connected to the church. If you ain't doing something, something is wrong. Because you, you connected to God. And if you get properly connected to God, you'll be properly connected to the church. You won't feel like that because God will feel that soul. Ooh, Lord, the Spirit of God be teaching the gospel. 